The NBA trade deadline is nearly here, so let's go through the entire Raptors roster and go through how likely it should be for them to get traded. Let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody. This is Amateur Sports 2, the second channel in the Amateur Production Network for additional Toronto Raptors content and videos just like this. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this one along the way, and make sure you're subscribed, helping us on the road to 2,000 subs to stay up to date with everything that's dropping over here. And what I like to do often with the second channel here is tier list. And we have another one here today going through the entire Raptors roster. I'm going to rank them and how likely it should be for them to get traded. Not how likely it is that they're going to get traded, but how likely it should be. What the Raptors should be doing with each player on the roster. For the purposes of this tier list, I've ignored the two-way players because, I mean, I, they're not getting traded. So we've got the 15 on the players on the main roster for this tier list in random order that tier maker has gifted me here. So let's not waste any more time and get into it. So this one might be a bit surprising. Starting off with Thaddeus Young. I mean, yeah, you'd want to trade him, but... He's on an $8 million contract. He's only here to be salary filler. I don't really see a reason for the Raptors to be like pushing to trade him and going out of their way to trade him. But hey, if you need salary filler, if there's somebody out there who thinks, you know, after this nice little spell by Thad, they could use him, trade if you can. Yeah, if you can trade him, absolutely. What's the point of keeping him? I mean, there's vet presence, but, you know, Garrett Temple will do that. Um, Garrett Temple might still be here. So, Thaddeus Young is a trade if you can. Gary Trent is coming up here, and he's on an $18 million expiring contract, or thereabouts $18 million. He has looked good in some spells and not so good in some spells. I'm starting to really come around on him in the right sections of his game when he's just focusing on catch-and-shoot stuff. I worry a bit about paying him. If you can get some value, you should push to trade him. If you can get value there. I'm not as kind of hell-bent on trading him, but ignore the headache of having the free agency coming up for him. Get some assets in, get some young players in. Wouldn't mind that, but I also wouldn't mind keeping him, that being said, as long as you can bring him back for like a little bit less than what he's making right now. Garrett Temple makes $3 million. I mean, I'm neutral. He's a really good vet. You can tell. First guy up during timeouts, the high five, the guy's coming off. First guy to stand up when a Raptors player makes a big play. He, people have talked about how good of a vet presence is, presence he is behind the scenes as well. I'm okay with Garrett Temple here. If you trade him, meh. If you don't trade him, also fine. Dennis Schroeder, you should push to trade him. Yeah, the season hasn't gone to plan here. I think Raptors fans are giving Dennis Schroeder a bit too harsh of criticism for the way he's played this season. The reality is he's on a mid-level exception contract, $12.5 million or so. He's been great. Um, he's been great value for money. He's a good player to have on the team, but what's the real point of keeping him here? The Raptors are rebuilding. I'm pretty comfortable if the Raptors can cash in on some assets. And I think uh, it's funny. He's in his Lakers uniform in this photo still. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if a trade to the Lakers could be on the cards. Could you snag Jalen hood Shafino, who went 16th overall in the recent draft? He's not playing too well, but can you snag like hood Shafino plus Gabe Vincent? The Lakers might be interested and could move, make a move for Dennis Schroeder. But I think you should push to trade him. I mean, there's just no sense of having him here. You need ball handlers, but the Raps are rebuilding. You can get assets for a player like that. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> you try to do that. Mayo quickly, pretty simply, is in the untouchable category. The fit next to Scotty Barnes makes a ton of sense. Uh, you know, we can obviously get, spoil this one a bit early. Scotty Barnes is clearly an untouchable player. He is the most untouchable player. He should really have a category of his own. But the fit of Emmanuel quickly next to Scotty Barnes makes a lot of sense. He is going to be part of the main cast of players that the Raptors are building around going forward. Absolutely, positively, quickly is not going to be involved in any trades. You know, I get that there's some concerns about Quickly's point guard play, his ability to put pressure on the rim, which kind of has dampered the excitement on having him a little bit, but I'm a huge fan of this player. He's going to start making some strides in the point guard position, getting used to this new role, not being a two guard. He's the one guard here. Yeah, Emmanuel Quickly, I'm buying his stocks. 24 years old. Good fit next to Scotty. Untouchable for the Raptors. Otto Porter is a weird one. Darko Ryakovich, head coach, said that Otto's going to start getting more involved in rotation. And since Darko said that, Otto has been less involved than ever in the rotation. So it's a bit weird. Uh, yeah, $6 million contract. I, I think there's a team that thinks that Otto Porter can help them. I personally think the Raptors could use some Otto Porter Jr. help. I don't know why he's not playing. 
I've been advocating for his playtime this season. When he has played, I've, I've liked what I've seen. But I get there's injury stuff. I get he was out last season, like the entire season. But you can't tell me a guy that was starting games for the 2022 NBA champions in the NBA Finals. You can't tell me Otto Porter, who started for that Golden State Warriors team, can't help a team in the playoffs. Yeah, it, you should push to make this trade because I believe there are going to be some teams who have some degree of interest in adding in that sort of presence to their team. Jakob Pertl is a weird one. Raptors got him at the trade deadline last year. One of the worst trades the franchise has ever made. I don't think that's exaggerating here. The trade itself was, was decent value if you look at it in a vacuum. But considering the position the Raptors were in and how this dug the hole even deeper on the team, bad trade. The Raptors needed to rebuild earlier. They waited too long. They panic moved and made a move for a center who didn't really fit the team completely. He's a good player. I like Jakob Pertl, but man, start shopping him. He's on a solid contract, four years, $80 million, $20 million a year. If a team needs a big like the Oklahoma City Thunder could use some size and rebounding. If they think they can push to make a championship run this year, Pertl's a nice fit at the five. Slide Chet down to the four. Pertle will be a nice pick-and-roll partner for Shea. Maybe you, you eat the Davis Bertans contract. I know it's two years, but can you get two first-round picks, eat the Bertans contract, and maybe even snag Isaiah Joe in the deal, add some shooting and youth to this team? I think that makes sense for the Raptors, and I think the Thunder could be interested, but that's just one example. I think the Raptors should push to move Jakob Pertle. Jordan Noir is a neutral one. Yeah, he's looked good when he's played. I don't know how much of this will sustain, but like, I don't know. I don't have any feelings. <laughs> if he's here, fine. If he's not, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this kind of be, I don't know. Jordan Nawara can stay. <laughs> I, I don't know. Our team's looking to trade for Jordan Nawara. With all due respect, I don't think so. Uh, Jalen McDaniel's coming up here. My God, what a horrible signing. Got signed on the biannual exception, albeit a four and a half million dollar contract. I, he's, 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 I don't mean to be so rude. He's virtually unplayable. Um, yeah, like, he's either of these. I'll put him here. It's kind of like, who wants him at this point? He's on. He's got another year on his contract here. He can't shoot. He's not a good defender. He doesn't do anything else. Like, he fits in the category of, like, what does he even do? Even in the tanking Raptors, he's not good enough to make the rotation. Uh, disaster of a signing. Didn't work out. Would love to just not watch him play for the Raptors anymore, honestly. Um, if he gets traded, that'd be great. Uh, Kyra Lewis, another neutral one. Like, I mean, yeah, I'll put him trade if you can. I, I don't see any effect coming for the Raptors. Yeah, he was an early pick. He was a lottery pick. That potential's gone. Um, yeah, if you can just manufacture a way to get rid of Kyra Lewis, why not? Why not? Grady Dick, you know, he struggled out the gates for the Raptors and the Raptors 905, but I believe... I'm seeing signs. I think there's reason to believe he's going to get there. He's a real good fit next to Scotty Barnes, which is what you have to consider. I think the shooting will come. He's a great decision maker. He's more than just a shooter. Got to work on his defense, but I think he's borderline untouchable. Like you, you have to believe that he is going to work out if you draft him 13th overall. I think there's tendencies and signs there. He's a player that I want to keep a hold of and continue working with. I don't want to insert him in a trade here. We're rebuilding. Give this guy play time. Let's see what he can do. Good case scenario right now for him. He's going to get more play time than he would be getting. Let's see how far he can go. Let's continue to work on his game. I mean, Dark Ryakovic was hired as this developmental guru. Like the entire freaking staff, Raptors coaching staff, is developmentally driven. Like Jama Malalela, another great development guy. Work on Grady Dick. Here's your project. Use your homework, guys. Keep Grady Dick. Uh, the player that will fit into the pack is bags. Essentially, like, get him, like... You better trade him. There is absolutely no reason not to trade him. Bruce Brown has a team option end of the season worth $23 million. There are no shortage of suitors looking for him. The Raptors have already reportedly turned down a first-round pick for him. I think that there is a plausible trade that can go down. Send him to the New York Knicks. Eat Evan Fournier's contract just till the end of the season. Then he has a team option, which you can obviously decline. Maybe you get Quinton Grimes in a deal. Maybe you don't get a pick, but maybe you get Quinton Grimes. Maybe you can snag Quinton Grimes in a deal. Good relationship brewing between these teams after the OG trade, which is working out really well for the Knicks. 
and the Raptors getting R.J. Barrett man quickly, which is, which is seemingly going to work out for us. Maybe you can manufacture a trade here. They get Bruce Brown. We get Quinton Grimes. We'll eat Devin Fournier contract. They get better. I think that's a trade that could go down. But yeah, you got to trade Bruce Brown. Absolutely. Chris Boucher is like in the middle here. If there is actually a team, listen, if there's actually teams who want to trade for him and are going to give you some positive assets, holy shit, you'd be an idiot not to. Boston maybe could look for a deal. I don't really see a way for Boston to balance out contracts, but hey, if the Clippers want him, we could eat the P.J. Tucker contract, get two second-round picks. I don't see what Chris Boucher is going to do to benefit this team for the next year and a half while, he has still, while he's still under contract. Second round picks, I mean, why not add those in from a team? If a team wants to give a second, two seconds, hell yeah. Sign me up for a Chris Boucher trade. I'm fine with it. Like, Boucher's an okay player. He's in and out of rotation here. If you can get something positive, you got to do it. RJ Barrett, I think, obviously, also fits into the untouchable tier here. The Raptors betting on his potential. He's looked really good as a Raptor so far. His defense needs work, but there's reason to believe he's 23 years old. A lot of room to grow going forward. I think that R.J. Barrett is untouchable for this team. So there you have it. Those are all 15 of the main roster Raptors players. Do you agree with the tier list I have here? Do you disagree? Give me your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. That's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed this one. Subscribe for more content here on Amateur Sports number two with this button down in the bottom corner. Check out my main channel for more Raptors content. Check out my Stream Clips channel for the best highlights from the streams from this channel. Here's another video you may enjoy where I also talk about the trade deadline on my main channel. I'll see you again next time for another video here on Amateur Sports 2.0.